I have an eye problem. Uh, my wife just dropped off my, my glasses up here. I don't wear them very often because I have contacts on. They say it makes me look smarter, but I don't know. Uh, this is what I would look like if I wasn't wearing contacts. Right now, I can't see anything because I got contacts, and, and I'm going to give myself a headache in a moment. But, uh, but I, I, have, I have really bad eyes. I'm nearsighted. Uh, they call it myopia, and, and this is what I have. In fact, uh, if I lived, you know, three, four hundred years ago, I would be worthless to society. I mean, they would pray, basically have to have somebody just take me around because I would leave the house and I would never be able to make my way back again. Because with nearsighted, it means I have the ability to see things close up, but I can't see things off in a distance very well. I can see colors and shapes, but far away is, is very blurry. Distant things are not in focus. And I found this out in, in school. I was in second grade, and I loved to read books. I could read really well. At a very early age, I just always loved to read. I always loved to read. But whenever I was in class, my teacher would ask me to read what was on the chalkboard, and I thought she was playing some kind of cruel joke on me. Because she's like, like, read what's on the chalkboard. I'm like, there's nothing on the chalkboard. And, and they're like, come up here. And I would walk up there, and then the words would magically appear on the chalkboard. And I was like, wow, I didn't see those before. And at that point, they realized that I needed to have, uh, you know, glasses. Now, to be in second grade, and I, I was so nearsighted, I, I wore bifocals, okay? So, so that wasn't a very cool thing for a second grader wearing bifocals. Because eventually, I just told my eye doctor, I'm like, I, I, can't, I can't deal with the bifocals anymore. Eventually, I went to contacts. And, and if I take my contacts out now, in order for me to read something or see something, I have to be this far away. Like, like, like that's, that's how bad it is. And, and I'm very, very nearsighted. And I have this eye problem. But many of us have, have an eye problem as well. And a different kind of eye problem than, than, than our physical eye. It's a different kind of eye problem. In your notes, we develop an eye problem when we lose the ability to focus on the right things. When we lose the ability to focus on the right things, physical eyes, we have an eye problem when I can't focus on the right things. Either I, either I focus on something too close or too far. People have, you know, astigmatism, cataracts. It all comes down to the ability to focus on the right things. But I have an eye problem, a me problem, when I can't focus on the right things as well. So what are you focusing on in your life? What are you focusing on today? So many people live with spiritual nearsightedness. Maybe they, their eyes are okay, but they live with spiritual nearsightedness. They only have the capacity to see what is directly in front of them. They only have the ability to see what's right there. Spiritual nearsightedness only allows you to see what's right in front of you. Everything off in a distance is very, very blurry. Now, this is a hard sermon uh, to preach, and it's also a hard sermon to listen to. And here's the reason why. It's about you, okay? Like, like it's, it's about you. In fact, in fact, just to prove the point, I want you to turn to somebody next to you and say, this sermon is about you, okay? Go ahead, tell them. Tell them it's about you. Now, now, now I want you to stop. look at the same person and say, but it's actually about me, Okay? So that, that's the problem with a sermon like this. We talk about being nearsighted, about only seeing things that are near to me, and we have this tendency that comes up in my mind saying, you know what, so-and-so should really hear this. You know, I, I wish my spouse was here today to hear this sermon. I wish my neighbor, I wish my kids heard this. I wish my parents heard this because they are just so, so self-centered. They're so focused on themselves. I really wish they could hear it, but I just want to stop those thoughts for just a moment. Stop the elbow jabs for just a moment. And let me say this, you need to hear this and I need to hear this because we all from time to time, some of us more than others, but all of us struggle with spiritual nearsightedness, only seeing things that are close to us. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, the Apostle Paul is writing to his protege, Timothy, and he says this, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times. For people will love only themselves and their money. You ever seen anybody like that? Only loves himself and their money. We see this all the time, everywhere in this world. It says, people will only love themselves and their money. They'll be boastful. 
and proud, always bragging about their accomplishments, always bragging about themselves. They'll be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents. Now, I just want to stop there for a moment. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? He's saying all these bad things are going to be boastful and proud. They're going to be these horrible people, and they're going to disobey their parents. You know, I'm like, you know what? Well, me as a parent, I'm like, yeah, that's right, yeah. But but me as a as a kid who still has parents, I'm like, you know, that means I still need to be respectful. I still need to be honoring them even as I get older. Anyhow, he says, they're scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents, and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others. We hate it when people slander us, but how quickly do we jump to slandering somebody else, speaking ill of them, gossiping, talking behind their back. They will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. Verse four, they'll betray their friends. They'll be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. Do we ever find ourselves in that situation where we love pleasure rather than loving God? He continues on in verse 5. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. We see this in the world all around us. People who act religious, but they're rejecting the very power that can make them godly. Last line of this verse is stay away from people like that. Just underline that. Stay away from people like that. Are we ever like this? See, this verse, this series of verses here, basically describes spiritual nearsightedness. It describes it. People who are proud and boastful, disobedient to their parents. They slander other people. They, they're full of pride. They love pleasure rather than God. He says, stay away from them. Warning, warning. Don't be around someone like this. Danger, danger. But then the question becomes, is am I somebody like that? Do I ever do these things in my life? This really sounds like the world that we're living in today. You know, our world really caters to this mentality, though. It really caters to self-centered people where everything in this world is about me. And we live in this hyper-customizable world where, where I can make everything just the way I like it because... The object of our worship is often ourselves. We worship ourselves. Oh, it's all about me, myself, and I. I want it my way. I want to do things the way I want to do things. You know, when I was a kid and and we would go out and grab a cup of coffee, there was usually maybe three options, okay, that that I had growing up. Maybe, Maybe you're older, maybe you had less options. For me, the options that we had was regular or decaf, and then we had, you know what, cream or sugar or a combination of that. I mean, it was pretty simple. Did you know that right now, if you go into Starbucks, there is approximately 87,000 different ways to get your drink made. 87,000. I mean, it's however you want it. You want it with soy milk? Fine. You want it with almond milk? Fine. We'll get those almonds and milk those little things. I don't know how they do that. <laughs> little udders, I guess. Um you know, they're 87, and if you think that's a lot, go to Subway. Go to Subway. Did you know, that the people that are smarter than me, figure this out. There is 38 million different ways to get your Subway sandwich made. 38 million combinations. So that when you go there and you order this sandwich, you may very well be the only person in the world that orders your sandwich that way. Man, there is so many varieties because I want it my way. And I'm not saying that it's wrong to, to have your sandwich the way that you like it. But, but this all caters to this self-worship, how I'm only focused on things that are directly related to me. It's all about me and nothing else matters. I want it my way. I'm the most important person in my world. And many of us would never come out and say these words out loud, but yet it's how we live our life. It's how we act. It's how we treat other people. 